Well, thank you very much. And uh, I would like to uh, start by exploring where uh, and what the Americans have said and acted to date. They have been very clear in the messaging to us around self-sufficiency, repatriation of jobs, be that from the national security tariffs we saw on steel and aluminum to the tax reforms that incentivized uh, American companies to repatriate jobs to the U.S., to signalizing that they want to modernize trade rules so that taxpayer dollars can spur domestic investment to climate change, where obviously we've seen the cancellation of Keystone XL and now uh, the controversy and the situation over Line 5. The message is serious. The opposition to decommission Line 5, not just to suspend the underwater portion, has been increasing since 2015, and now we have a looming deadline of May 2021, which is just around the corner. So my first question for the, for the officials is, what possible outcome, what probability do we have in being able to turn this around before May? As the minister said, uh, we're quite confident that uh, we will be able to, of course, to turn and, and go beyond May. Uh, the recent decisions of the judge asking for a mediator between the parties actually have very good news. As the minister said, we also, of course, exploring all the other possibilities to make sure that the continuation of the pipeline is not, uh, is not at risk. That's for sure. Well, unfortunately, there have been with Enbridge over 33 spills on line five of 1.1 million gallons. Line 6B, which is also uh, in the Kalamazoo River in Michigan, has experienced a significant spill of 1 million gallons. And this is fueling the influence in the U.S. And the understanding that I have is that the U.S. is saying it doesn't really affect us. It's oil from out west in Canada that's going to out east in Canada. So there's much more downside for us, the Americans, that's what I'm hearing from them, than there is upside to continue. So I wonder if you could counter that why is it more in the U.S. best interest to keep Line 5 going underwater than it is to cancel that and go through with what the Michigan governor has said? I will, if you allow me, I will turn to uh, Glenn, who's the uh, ADM in charge of this issue. But before I, I turn to him, I just want to remind people there's 70 pipelines crossing the border and there's 30 uh, transmission line. Our systems are totally integrated. Energy goes from south to north to north from south. It's beneficial for both countries. It's the way it has been. It's the way it is. It's also the same thing for line five. You've got some of that energy, as it was mentioned, that is going to Quebec and Ontario. But I'm, I'm of, hearing that, in fact, that's not how it's being viewed. This particular You're, you're right. There's, there's, for... always, there's always proponents who are presenting things differently. But I so, will just, uh, if you allow me to ask Glenn to provide you with some numbers of what exactly li line five provides and, and bring to United States economy and, of course, to United States people. If, if, if I can, I, I'm short on time. So I just wanted to say, what is Canada's plan B? What is the government looking at at a plan B? We're looking at over 2,100 truckloads a day. If this were to arrive, and it could arrive as soon as May 2021, what is Canada's plan B? Our plan A is to make sure that the continuation of the pipeline is going to the pipeline is going to continue to operate. We're not working on the scenarios where it's not going to happen. We have discussions with provinces on a regular basis on what are the impact, how does that work, who's in, who's impacted by by the pipeline, who's uh, what exactly are the benefit of the pipeline for them. Of course, we are doing all our work at all levels with our friends in the Well, we in certainly US. hope that you're right. <laughs> Um, I'd like to talk quickly, though, about uh, critical 
minerals, if I could. I know the United States has already a federal strategy to ensure secure and reliable supply of critical min minerals. I know that the European Union has an EU raw materials strategy where they're looking at being independent from uh, a, a critical mineral perspective, as does Japan and Australia. Could you share with us where is Canada's critical mineral list and where is Canada's strategy for self-sufficiency in this area? Jeff, maybe you want to answer this question. Uh, thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to perhaps address this question. So our strategy on working on critical minerals has been underway for a number of years. So you mentioned the EU, for example, and the United States. And so we have a working group with the United States that's been in place for well over a year in which we're working on five specific areas that includes industry engagement, joint research and development, defense supply chains, improving information on resource potential and mapping, and collaborating in multilateral fora. All that work has been underway. We're working on it. We have um, worked with the United States to continue that. And last week, the Prime Minister and President Biden continued that by reinforcing that we're going to focus Do on batteries. Do we batteries. have a list of minerals Ms. Ms. that Ms. we Ms. consider? Your time, your time is 